What's up guys welcome back to the channel in this particular video I will explain the problem number of paths well this is again an interesting problem based on quantitative aptitude so guys make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video starting with the problem statement so it says that the problem is to count all the possible paths from top left to bottom right of the given m cross n matrix now the constants are from each cell you can basically make either a right move or a down move right so let me explain this guys uh, we are given a 3 cross 3 matrix according to this particular example so let me draw it uh, we have a 3 cross 3 matrix and for this particular matrix our task is to reach the destination which is the bottom right cell starting from the top left cell right and this is going to be the source now what we can do is see uh, first of all let me change the color guys so what are the possible moves the first move that i can see is i can make a down move then again down then right then right and this way i'll be able to reach my target so i can write this particular move down down right and right so this is the first possibility that we have after this the second possibility can be i can make a right move then again right move then down then down so this is right right down and down after this the third possibility can be uh, I can first make uh, a down move then I can make a right move right move then again down so this is down then right right then down after this the fourth possibility can be I can make a right move then two times I can make a down move then I can again make a right move so this is right then down down then right this is the fourth possibility now one more possibility can be first of all guys let me erase uh, some extra space uh, stuff so that I can get some space right so okay let me raise everything from here now guys uh, one more possibility that I can say is I can first make a down move then I can make a right move then down then right so this is down right then again down then right apart from this one more possibility that I can say is right move then down move then right move then again down move so this is right down then right then again down so these are the possibility that I can see for this particular example guys and now there are six possibilities right and checking for other possibilities so what I can say is if I take a right move then again right then down then left then I can make a down then right so this is right right then down left then again uh, down and then right so this is also possibility but for this possibility guys there is a problem that I am moving on the left direction right I'm making a left move here but left move is not allowed I can either move right or down and for these possibilities you can see that I am either making a down move or a right move so there are only six possibilities for this particular example so six is going to be the output now I hope you have understood the problem well one more line guys that I have missed out is return the answer modulo 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7 because for greater examples uh, the answer can be very large right so this is about the problem statement let's talk about the solution now okay so guys first of all uh, let me draw the same example which is given to us so basically m is equal to 3 and n is also equal to 3 so i'm going to draw a m cross n grid right so this is basically going to be a 3 cross 3 grid and now see one thing here guys uh, the first approach that will come to your mind is we can try out every possibility using recursive approach or backtracking i'll say for example see if this is source this is target so i can basically start from this position this is i equals to zero and j equals to zero right this is the first cell and see i and j are basically going to denote every possible cell in this matrix like for this particular cell i equals to one and j equals to one and instead of writing this i will simply write one comma one right the first is i and the second is j now what i can do is i can basically try out every move so i can go down or I can go uh, right this is the possibility so I'm going to write a function which is basically going to be a solve function this is going to take i and j guys for now I'm talking about the recursive approach so that you can get the first idea that should come to your mind right so see this function is basically going to give me a total number of ways so I can make a down move or I can make a right move so I'll simply write solve i plus 1 and j when i do i plus 1 then i plus 1 basically from this point will come to this point right next row i'm talking about so this is a down move and the second move is a right move so this is solve uh, i comma j plus 1 and see now this is going to give me some value which is going to denote the number of total ways from this particular point and this is going to give me the number of total possible ways from this point right so i can simply add up these two values and then i can simply return these values so this is the first approach that comes to our mind and now see guys 
there are some cases that we need to handle like the first case is the base condition this is a recursive approach so when i come to this particular point so i have to stop and i have to return one because this is our first way so i'll simply write if i equals to zero uh okay if i equals to n minus one and and j equals to uh okay so guys see here i is basically going to denote number of rows right so m will come here n will come here so i'll write i equals to m minus one and j equals to n minus one so at this point i can simply return one why i'm returning one because now i have got one way and second uh situation can be if my i is already equal to n minus one so at this point guys i can't do i plus one i can't do this particular thing why because this is going to give me index out of bound so i'll simply write return return uh this particular condition which is solve i comma j plus one and for uh another case can be if my j is already equal to uh like n minus one for this i have to write m minus one guys i don't know why i'm getting confused uh with i and n right so i have to write n minus one here and m minus one here and i'll simply return uh return solve solve for uh i will simply write i plus one and j right and i can't write this particular possibility because now j is already equal to n minus one so if i do j plus plus then it will come somewhere at this point which is out of index right so guys this is the first approach that we have now you can see that we are simply trying out every particular possibility recursively and talking about the time complexity so see for every part particular cell i have two possibilities either go down or go right so this is nothing but two raised to the power n cross m right so the, uh, this is the possibility for this particular uh, approach so the time complexity is going to be o of 2 raised to the power n cross m right now guys this is about the first approach we are simply going to optimize this particular approach so let's see how we can optimize this approach okay so in order to understand the optimal approach we need to dive into some mathematics guys see one thing here in this particular solution for every possibility we are not going to take more than four moves isn't it surprising but why so let's try to understand this mathematically but first of all let me write four here we are not going to take four moves uh, for any particular possibility you can see here guys right and now what i want you to notice is see from the source we have to reach the target so the source is at i equals to zero and j equals to zero or i can simply write zero comma zero right so target is at uh, m minus one and n minus one right here m minus one is the last row and n minus one is the last column see guys i have to reach the last row first then i can reach the last column and this is our place right so in order to reach the last row i can take two down moves and in order to reach the last column i can simply take two right moves isn't it guys so this means that in any of these possibilities i have to take i must have to take two down moves right right and two uh, right moves so you can see here for any possibility we are not going to take uh, more than or less than two down moves and the remaining two are automatically going to be the right moves right so this is going to give us an idea what i can do is uh, now first of all let me write the same example here so that i can explain you the approach deeply see i have a matrix of size three cross three here right and i know one thing that i have to take total two right moves and two down moves so what i can do is i can write four places here because uh total i have to take four moves and out of those four moves two are going to be the down moves right so what i can do is i can simply choose two any two cell from this particular possibility so what is the possibility of choosing two cell from four possible uh like places so this is nothing but 4c2 and once i have chosen any of these uh like any of two uh places then i can simply place a uh, down move there and after this the remaining two are automatically going to be the right moves right so this is how we are going to solve the problem now if i try to solve this then uh like in quantitative aptitude we basically use a simple approach four into three divided by two into one right and this is going to give me two and six as the answer so this is how we calculate uh ncr in like uh, mathematically right so what i can do is if i have ncr i am simply going to generalize this particular thing now so i can simply do n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 up to r times right and after this i can do 1 into 3 or uh, 1 into 2 into 3 this is r times right so guys this is what i can do and now one more thing is if i want to generalize this particular thing so let's say i'm given a grid of m cross n right so for this particular grid there are 
total possible m minus 1 down moves that I have to take and n minus 1 right moves that I have to take. If I add this then I am going to get m plus n minus 2. So this is the total possibility and if I try to use formula here so m is 3 and n is 3 so this is 3 plus 3 minus 2 and this is going to give me 4 right and I have 4 here and after this what are the total uh, cells that I have to choose so I can either choose n minus 1 or m minus 1. So this means that I can either find m plus n minus 2 c m minus 1 I can either find the value of this or I can find m plus n minus 2 divided by uh, like n c uh, n minus 1 guys both means the same if I try to find the value of both then both are going to give me the answer and both are going to give me the same values right so guys this is what I need to do now the question is how to calculate this particular value efficiently right so let me explain guys I have already explained how we do it mathematically so now I can simply write this approach I have to start a loop r times right so I'll simply say that 4 i equals to 0 then i small okay uh, let's start from 1 i smaller than equal to r then i plus plus this is what I can do and uh, inside this particular loop uh, let's say I have an answer which is initially equal to 1 so I'll say that answer equals to uh, answer multiplied with n minus i uh, minus 1 right this is what I can do guys and I can uh, divide this by answer divided by because I have to divide by r as well so initially r is equal to 1 so I'll say the answer by i right i is playing the role of r here so now you can see that this is what I'm doing so for the first iteration I will have n by 1 then I'll have n minus 1 by 2 then n minus 2 by 3 so this is what I'm doing r times once I have done this I have got my answer so this is the whole approach guys and O of R is the time complexity of this approach and space complexity is not more than O of 1 right but guys there is a problem with this approach see for large answer we have to find answer mod mod how we can do this guys this is the problem that we have so I am going to explain this particular thing as well so what I can do is guys uh, first of all I can simply write mod here so when I am multiplying I can calculate uh, mod as well right so this is going to handle the case for integer overflow right but how to use mod for dividing so see one thing here that this is answer divided by i so can i write answer into 1 divided by i and 1 divided by i is nothing but minus uh, i raised to the power minus 1 so this is nothing but this one right but guys i have to calculate mod as well so i'll simply do one thing answer into i raised to a minus 1 mod mod right and this particular concept is known as a uh, mod inverse this is known as mod inverse so we are simply going to calculate mod inverse right but how we calculate mod inverse so little fermat's theorem is something okay uh, let me write fermat's uh, fermat's little theorem this is very important algorithm guys and it basically says that when mod is basically a prime number because 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7 is a prime number and this is the value of 4 mod right so when this is a prime number mod is a prime number then we can simply do i raised to the power uh, mod minus 2 mod minus 2 and whole mod right this is what I can do and now I just need to calculate this particular thing and how we calculate power efficiently guys let's say I want to calculate uh, 5 raised to the power 26 so how we can calculate it efficiently so what we will do is I can write this as 5 raised to the power 13 into 5 raised to the power 13 after this to this I can write 5 raised to the power 6 into 5 raised to the power 6 into 5 raised to uh, 5 simple right and for this I can again write 5 raised to the power 6 into 5 raised to the power 6 into 5 after this I can again break this down 5 raised to the power 3 into 5 raised to the power 3 and then I can again break this 5 raised to the power into 5 raised to the power 3 then again this as well right so this is what I can do and now I want you to notice one thing here this is the most efficient method of calculating power right so calculating power why this is more efficient manner because here I am each time I am dividing the power by 2 you can see that here power is 26 then 13 then 6 then 3 so this is how I am dividing the power so guys I can simply write uh, one algorithm I can simply write one algorithm it basically says that uh, uh, like what I, I have like okay let's say I have to calculate n raised to the power x right so I'll simply uh, write a function function power power and this is going to take n and r right so i'll say that if my r is equal to 0 then simply return minus 1 oh okay simply return 1 why because anything n raised to the power 0 is always equal to 1 right and if my r is equal to 1 then i can simply return n itself 
this is what I can do and if my okay now this is going to be interesting if my r is odd right r mod 2 is equal to 1 you can see that if r is odd then I am adding extra factor here right so I'll simply uh, write power uh, power of I'll simply write power of n by uh, okay n comma r by 2 into power of n comma r by 2 into n right this is what I can do and if my r is even then I can simply return I can simply return power of uh, power of n comma uh, like n comma r by 2 into power of n comma r by 2 right guys I am not sure whether this is a exact correct approach but I will definitely show the implementation but this is the basic idea behind how we calculate power efficiently right so the time complexity is O of log n but see mod minus 2 is basically a constant here so we can consider it as constant as well right so we are not going to consider this complexity in the our uh, the main solution now let me show you the code so this is the code in C++ guys you can see that this is how we calculate mod inverse here instead of using the recursive approach I have uh, okay you can see that this is the point where I am finding the power right and instead of using recursive approach I am simply using a loop here so that I can get rid of recursion stack space as well this is how I can calculate power and this is the mod inverse function right and everything uh, like is clear to you I hope and this is the code in Java you can see that guys I have mod here then I am simply calculating ncr you can see that this is my n this is my r and this is my again mod function and in python see the beauty of python guys I can uh, directly calculate mod inverse here right so this is a python code now I hope everything is clear to you guys if the video is something that you liked so you can hit the like button if you are new here you can subscribe the channel as well thank you